it's Courtney and welcome back to another reading update. So as you can see, um, we're recording in a different room today. We are currently in the process of a little bit of a home renovation, which is super exciting, but also means that my studio where we normally record is in a little bit of chaos as we paint the walls and get new floors and all of those things. I've got lots of books to talk about today, so we'll just go ahead and, and dive right in. So starting with what I finished, so this is talk about both of these at one time, but I kind of went a little wild and finished both The Missing of Claire de Lune and The Memory of Babel by Christelle DeBeau, which are the second and third books in the Mirror Visitor series. I am completely in love with this series. I have to wait until September for the fourth one to come out in English because it is a French fantasy series and I cannot contain my excitement for, for, when that, for that to come out. This series is so magical. I love the world. I love all of the characters. In the second book, we really get to kind of see an outsider perspective of Thorn as he starts to kind of fall for Ophelia. And of course, you have, you know, the action and the intrigue of court life and the stakes are definitely higher in the second book than they were in the first. You've got some, some violence and death and a mystery that you kind of have to solve. And then in the third book, we got to see the flip side of that. So uh, we actually get transported to a different location. I won't give any spoilers for why or what happens. But the third book really focused on Ophelia coming to terms with her feelings for Thorn. So by the end of the third book, even though this is still such a slow burn, I'm like, okay, where's the fourth book where we can actually like see this relationship come to like a fruition? Um, so it's still such a slow burn, but we really got to see Ophelia kind of come to terms with her feelings for Thorn and we got a new location, new characters, a new mystery. Uh, I just am completely in love with this, this series and I'm trying not to give too many spoilers since this is the second and third books. If you haven't read this series, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. And anybody in the US who is also waiting on the fourth translation, I am with you. We are all going to be taking the day off work when this book comes out. So yeah, that's what I finished. The uh, Once again, that is The Missing of Claire de Lune and The Memory of Babel by Christelle Debo. Okay, on to what I'm reading. First thing, I did start Black Buck by Mateo Escarapur. This is my friend book club pick. We were supposed to meet last Sunday and then we've got our meeting got pushed. So I haven't finished this yet because I have a little bit more time and I completely got distracted by the Mirror Visitor series, but I'm really enjoying this so far. One thing that's caught my eye is that it is about this like startup culture and, and sales culture and all of this. And there are these little asides in the text that basically are like sales tips. So it's almost part fiction novel, part like sales help book, which is such an interesting concept. When the publisher compared it to The Wolf of Wall Street, they definitely were not kidding because the tone is very, very similar to that movie. I am only like a couple, I think four or five chapters in, so I'm not very far in, so I don't have a ton to talk about right now. Just beyond the the format, and like I said, those little asides, um, I have heard nothing but wonderful things from this novel. I'm excited to finish it. I think we'll, our group should be meeting this Sunday, so that will be finished this week. So next reading update, I will definitely have a full look for you. So once again, that's Black Buck by Mateo Escaripor. Okay, the other two things I'm reading, I'm reading one on my Kindle and I'm also listening to an audiobook. The book that I'm reading on my Kindle is Blessed Monsters by Emily A. Duncan. I was so excited to get an e-arc of this book. It is my most anticipated 2021 release. It is the third and final book in Something Dark and Holy trilogy. <sighs> I am about 60% of the way through and I'm really enjoying it. 
right now. I'm not going to give any spoilers for those of you who haven't read the series, but right now I'm kind of just in anticipation of what's to come and just keep waiting for a certain reunion between two characters, which if you've read the series, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the series, I would def definitely recommend uh, look checking it out. It is a very, very dark fantasy series centered around these two warring countries that have different ideas behind the magic use and uh, divinity. So in one country, magic is only given to those by the gods. And then in this other country, there it is very brutal, very dark, um, and they have figured out how to harness blood magic. And so it is a feud between these two countries. And of course you have this like ragtag group that from each country that are kind of coming together that are betraying each other and trying to stop the war, but also trying to work together and they're all friends. And this third book is like a big family reunion between all of them. But also I know something devastating is gonna have to happen because there's no way that we'll be able to end the series. It's just like happy-go-lucky. Um, but I am so, so excited that I was able to get my hands on this book a couple weeks before its release on April 6th. So once again, that is Blessed Monsters. It is the third book in the Something Dark and Holy trilogy by Emily A. Duncan. Okay, the, the third book that I'm reading, I'm actually listening to on audiobook. I started it yesterday while I was deep cleaning my house. Uh, it is Yolk by Mary H.K. Choi. It is a family drama. I think it's being billed as YA, but I would consider it probably more new adult. But it is a family drama about two estranged Korean American sisters, Jane and June. They are both living in New York, but they're both living very separate lives. Uh, June is extremely successful. She has a great paying job. She's got the nice apartment, all of those things that like we as society, you know, usually deem successful. She's kind of checking off the boxes on each of those. And then her little sister Jane is kind of living a completely separate life uh, than she is. So Jane is in fashion school, but she's really struggling to stay motivated. She is living in this really scummy apartment. She's got kind of this deadbeat boyfriend. And so she doesn't feel like she's really living up to her family or her sister's expectations. Um, she's also struggling a lot with her mental health. Trigger warnings for this uh, in this book for eating disorders and body dysmorphia. So they're complete at the beginning of the novel, they're completely estranged. They, they maybe talk every couple months. Um, and even when they do, it's, it's very brief. Um, but then June reaches out to Jane to tell her that she has been diagnosed with uterine cancer and it changes Jane's world completely. Jane starts to try to cope with her own self and then also like this possibility that she might lose her sister. So I listened to about 30% of it yesterday while I was cleaning. So I got a pretty decent, you know, pretty far into it. It's, it's a pretty long book. I'm really enjoying it. The narrator is amazing, but it is definitely a heavier read than what I had thought. I was thinking it was more of a contemporary romance with a little bit of family drama, but right now, at least where I'm at, it is focused a lot on, on mental health. Um, and I'm excited to see where the story goes, but for those of you who are interested in reading it, please do check trigger warnings uh, because it does deal with a lot of family and mental health issues. So that is Yolk by Mary H.K. Choi. Now I know what I bought. Um, the first thing I bought was this little tiny vintage copy of Call of the Wild. This was one of my favorite books as a kid. I found this at the used bookstore for $3 and I just really liked the color and the cover, so I decided to buy it. Um, but it's just like one of those mass market paperbacks of Call of the Wild. Let's see, I didn't even look to see when this one was printed. Yeah, it's from 1965. So I just, yeah, I don't know, it brought me joy and so I bought it. But yeah, that's The Call of the Wild by Jack London. And then uh, the next thing is I was gifted uh, 
the Hemingway Stories by Simon & Schuster. So shout out to Simon & Schuster. This is a new collection of Hemingway's short stories. Um, it is being released in conjunction with the Ken Burns documentary about Hemingway. I was super excited to, to receive this because my husband and I actually have a pretty large collection of Hemingway. And so it was nice to kind of get a, a more portable, readable version of his stories because a lot of the Hemingways that we own are either first editions or and or like vintage copies that are not in great condition. So we don't really take those off the shelf very often, but this one is definitely just like a great go-to for anybody who is interested in reading some of Hemingway's best stories. And of course, um, if you guys are interested in Hemingway, there is the uh, a giant PBS documentary by Ken Burns that you will be able to watch as well. So that is the Hemingway stories. It is, it, it is selected and introduced by Tobias Wolf. And thank you again to Simon & Schuster for sending me a free copy. That's everything today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back with a video about my most anticipated end of March, early April releases. So things that'll be hitting shelves in the next month or so soon. Until then, please, as always, like, subscribe, comment, and let me know what you're reading, what you just finished, or what you bought. And of course, follow me on Instagram at NotSoWellRead. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!